for right now, you just endure and take each day as you can. When Josh told police he took the boys camping in the middle of the night in Utah's West Desert, police started their search there. Detectives are scouring rocky hillsides and abandoned mine tunnels for any signs of Susan Powell. But police for months and months would search these mines, taking canine teams. And West Valley police detectives say they plan to survey as many as possible. The most intense part of this search is happening right at the bottom of this Investigators hill. are swarming the high desert. Josh told somebody that the best place to dispose of a body would be in a mine. This is one of those abandoned mine shafts in which detectives went through. Nobody would ever find him. It's like finding a needle in the haystack. A lot of questions still uh, unanswered at this point. There's a big part of you missing, and you want to know the truth. But the family won't give up hope. There is still purple ribbons at their home. There is still stickers on car windows. Josh decides that He's going to take the boys up to his dad's house in Washington to try to get away from the media circus. you have anything to say? Josh, will you give us a comment You're a today? person of interest, Josh. Josh's dad, Steve Powell, he takes control. He shields Josh from the media and becomes his most ardent defender. I call it Fort Powell because it became a fortress. They had the windows, blinds drawn. They kept the house dark inside. When the media would knock, They'd open a crack and say, no, they weren't talking to anybody. Hi, I'm trying to find Josh Powell. They were just their own little country. Josh isolates himself from the world. He's not talking to police. He's not talking to media. He's certainly not searching for his missing wife. I suddenly had this, this thought, I should try and get Josh to confess. Even Josh's sister, Jennifer Graves, doesn't believe him. So she goes to police, and she volunteers to wear a wire and go inside her dad's house. They were just about to have dinner, and we went in, and the boys were so excited to see us. My birthday! It is! It's your birthday, Johnny! I didn't know exactly how to force this confrontation with Josh. I've been hearing rumors that you're probably being arrested soon. Well, I don't know. Suddenly, I just, I, sh I just shoved Josh into the bathroom. And at that point, I was like, drop all pretense. Just tell me where her body is. I'm trying to cover it up. Where is Susan? Jennifer did a phenomenal job. I just don't believe it anymore. I can see it in your eyes. There's something there. You're wrong. Huh? I think I am. I think you just need to confess now and get it over with. Don't be ridiculous. I know what I've done, and I haven't done anything. You probably... I've already told you every stack. I'm not going to violate my attorney's direction. He still wouldn't budge. He still would not give me anything. I was so frustrated. Eventually, Steve kicked Jennifer out of the residence, calling her derogatory names. You are a bitch, is what you are. Yeah, talk about your brother and my son that way. I regret not getting the confession, but I don't regret going. This is Good Morning America. And joining us now, Susan's mother and father, Judy. Susan's parents, from the moment she was missing, they were very involved with the press. You suspect your, your son-in-law, your grandchildren, what they saw. But very quickly, the tone changed. We made a conscious decision. The uh, politeness wasn't working, so we basically called him out. Josh is a desperate person. He has no valid uh, explanation for where he was. Chuck Cox and the family, they're putting the, the purple ribbons. They're, uh, they got the billboard outside the neighborhood. All these things, I'm sure, are driving him crazy. But for 18 months, he sits in isolation and doesn't talk to anybody about it. To try to get Josh to talk, we put together the honking wave. What in the world is a honking wave? Thank you! And he said, you make these, you're going to get these huge signs, and you stand on the really busy corners and get people to honk and wave to show their support. Thank you! It can cause anxiety and disruption in your suspect's mind. 
people start to do things as the stress tends to build. They picked a busy street near a store that they knew Steve and Josh shopped at, and uh, Chuck and Judy and others were out there with signs and everything. And there were television cameras there. We're not going to stop looking for her no matter how long it takes. They had these shirts with uh, Susan's face. I think it said, have you seen me? And they had some big posters, and they were waving and balloons and handing out uh, flyers to cars as they went by. Steve pulled by, and the next thing I know, he's stomping over towards me. You can't do this. This is a store that I shop at. The only places where they've passed out flyers about Susan, the only place where they've put up billboards, the only place where they've duct taped flyers to light posts. How okay. is you coming here helping to find Susan? It isn't helping to find Susan. How is your standing at our neighborhood market helping to find Susan? Chuck? An extraordinary, personal, a very public confrontation that erupted in the middle of the search for Susan Powell. Several family members were clashing in front of the cameras. They're that all over the media. Yeah, 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 if somebody yeah, has no. seen her, they, then they can they, yeah. report to the and police. And you're only going to do this. Which other stores are you doing this at, Chuck? It was ugly. It was weird. It was really contentious. I was waiting for the cops to come and haul one of them away. So you come out against my family. Then Josh showed up midway into this confrontation on the street corner. And he had the boys in the van with him. Chuck Cox uses my sons as pawns in the media to drive whatever message he is trying to drive. Are you sure. doing okay? Yeah, that's all right. I get a call from Josh. We were telling Josh, okay, are you gonna do this interview or not? And and he finally he finally said yes. So I just wanna talk just real quick and I just wanna You still love her? Yeah. He seemed very distant when I spoke to him. He had a hollow look and a stare that I wondered, is he trying to intimidate me? Josh, did you kill your wife? And then there was Steven wanting to be interviewed, and he ends up revealing the like biggest bombshell. Sex. There were just sexual things going on between us. This is your daughter-in-law. We were watching this on TV, and our jaws just dropped. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.